Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities, and it's free. Sign up for The Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. Yeah, I don't think Mother knew about this. Uncle Marvin was strangled by his own beard. Yeah, never saw it coming. And welcome to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. My name is Fisher. I am your radio root sleuth. And this is the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this segment of our show brought to you by LegacyTree.com. And as usual, great guests today. You know, a while back we talked about how you have to find a place to plant your family tree because there's so many places you might want to put it. Where do you choose to do it? Well, one of those places is Roots Magic, and we're going to talk to the founder and CEO of that great database and talk about how that actually works now in interaction with other websites. And it's really good stuff. It's coming up in about eight minutes, so get ready for that. Then later in the show, we're going to talk to Lindsay Fulton from the New England Historic Genealogical Society. She has discovered how J.K. Rowling, when she worked on Harry Potter and, of course, this new series that's coming out in November, has gone about doing backstories on the characters using real genealogy and real people. And she'll tell you all about that coming up later on in the show. But right now, let's head out to Boston and talk to my good friend, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. David Allen Lambert, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, but it's just a little hot here in Beantown. <laughs> I think it's really hot everywhere. I'm excited, David, because new subscribers, by the way, to our free newsletter, The Weekly Genie, can now receive your 10 tips to get you started. And this is great for those who are just getting underway because it's going to keep it really simple and keep it really focused for you. Well, I'm delighted to be part of this because, you know, everybody starts at one point in their research that may just need that little extra tip to go further. So I'm honored to be part of the newsletter. And you can sign up, by the way, on our Facebook page and at ExtremeGenes.com, and we get it to you on Mondays. Hey, I got to ask a question for you. Do you have an app on your phone to catch little animals called Pokemon? <laughs> no, I haven't done it. I've got one son who's been into it and uh, lots of friends. I think there are like three or four Pokemon stops right in my neighborhood. Is this uh, affecting you in Boston? Well, I can tell you that we have people standing in front of our building on Newbury Street fighting Pokemon because apparently someone has slapped down a Pokemon gym right at 99101 <laughs> Newbury Street. It's interesting. I think as a historian i think it's wonderful people are going out and seeing monuments and statues but there's some downside to it kind of strange in a way because i'm a trustee of a local cemetery and my friend called me up and says my kids wanted to go to the cemetery the other day I said, that's great and i said why there's a pokemon gym at the southworth gravestone at the cemetery i'm like what <laughs> and sure enough i looked at the app and that's where it is so i'm not sure if it's sending the right message but it sure is giving people exercise families are working together my kids use it so i don't really see any harm in it no i you know when you consider how many millions of people are out there they're socializing they're outdoors they're moving people are losing weight they're going to historical sites I, there's a lot of upside to it we just hear kind of the funny stories which you're always going to get with a mass movement like this you know exactly well that leads me to my first story for the week which is the exciting 2.5 million historic criminal records that are being put online by find my past these are all from the public archives in england and these are amazing they cover from 1779 to 1936 wow. and this is going to be amazing to find your black sheep in your family yeah this is going to be huge i mean we're talking i want to say what six seven maybe eight or nine generations in some cases oh, uh, 
uh, easily. Yeah, there's a, a great possibility that you're going to find somebody in there. I don't know how many that averages per year. I would imagine it would increase over time as the population did. But this could be a breakthrough thing for people who have a brick wall in their English lines. Oh, absolutely. And you might find a uh, notable or unnotable kin in your family tree. I mean, maybe people, someone like Amelia Dyer, who was a baby farmer who had murdered 400 babies between oh. 1880 and 1896. Serial killer George Joseph Smith, who killed his three wives by drowning them in the bath before he was convicted in 1915. So, you know, if you can't find Uncle George on the family <laughs> tree, maybe it's because he was at the old Bailey and hung from a rope. So since my grandfather's from England, I'm hoping not to find any new relatives to report next right. week. And that is out right now. It is. And it's a, an exciting database for those that use Find My Past. I think you'll find this is just another one of the great British databases that they've put forth. Speaking of things going forth, I'm going to be going forth to Springfield, Illinois yes. from August 31st to September 3rd. And I'm hoping to meet all of our Extreme Gene listeners that are going to be at FGS between August 31st and September 3rd. I'm giving a couple of lectures and a luncheon talk, tales from the reference desk, basically funny stories that have happened to me in the 20 plus years I've worked in any age. It's just so come by, find me, take a picture, put it on Twitter or or send it to Fish for our Extreme Genes Facebook page. Uh, I'd love to meet all of you and just come by to the New England Historic Genealogical Society booth at FGS. Speaking of NEHGS, I always like to tell people not to reinvent the wheel. So after 4th of July, many of you might be having that patriotic fervor and wanting to find an ancestor who fought in the revolution. Don't recreate the wheel. The Daughters of the American Revolution and the Sons of the American Revolution's websites both have a way that you can search for ancestors and patriots that are tied into their database already. They have a way for you to search for ancestors that were either soldiers or patriots in their databases. So you don't have to recreate the wheel and you might find a match that somebody's already done the work for you. Boy, that is a great tip of the week. Well, NEHGS tonight, we're having a wonderful dinner with Mary Tedesco from uh, Genealogy Roadshow. She's been a guest on our show, Fish. I know yep. you know Mary very well. Uh, and uh, it's going to be at the Harvard Club. Looking forward to that. So I'll report back from there. And I just want to let you know that our free database is continued 18th and 19th century databases for some towns in Vermont. Uh, our guest user database is available for anyone. Just go to AmericanAncestors.org. Well, that's all I have from Beantown. I have to go out and find an air conditioner now. <laughs> Nicely done. All right, David, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again next week. And coming up next, we're going to talk to the CEO and founder of Roots Magic. Yes, it is a database that many, many people are using uh, around the world to keep track of their ancestors. But now you can kind of use it as a funnel for all the major sites and bringing it right into one place and go back the other way. You're going to want to hear what Bruce Busby has to say coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. 
world and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. You know, everybody needs a place of their own to plant their family tree. Preferably one that no one else can mess with and only you can control. That perfect place is Roots Magic. Roots Magic has been a family history standard for years. And now, Roots Magic 7 is on the market. It's an award-winning genealogical software program which makes researching, organizing, and sharing your family history easy. You can start from scratch or import data from other software or even family search. Roots Magic also automatically finds records relating to your ancestors from MyHeritage, FamilySearch, and soon Ancestry and Find My Past. You can use it to create beautiful charts, reports, and books. And have you ever thought about making your own family history website? Roots Magic can make that happen too. And of course, there are free videos, guides, and technical support to help you along. Isn't it about time you planted your family tree? Whether you're a beginning genie or experienced professional, Roots Magic is the perfect tool for you. Hey, welcome back. It's America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And I'm very excited to talk to my next guest, Bruce Busby. He is the CEO of Roots Magic. And Roots Magic, if you're not familiar with it, is your very own file for your ancestors. And it does so much more than that. And Bruce, first of all, welcome to the show. We've never had you on before, so this is long overdue. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was looking back. I mean, your history, you've been doing this, creating uh, files, uh, personal databases for people for decades now. What got you started in it, and what got you going into Roots Magic? Well, we, we started our company back in 86, and uh, we were doing spreadsheet software, but it became pretty obvious that, that that wasn't a market we were going to be able to easily break into because all the largest companies in the world were making spreadsheets. So we wrote a genealogy program called Family Origins, and uh, we licensed that to a company called Parsons Technology out in Iowa. And at the time, back in the late 80s, they were one of the bigger, you know, bigger, small companies that were out there. And so we went through 10 versions. We went through 10 versions of Family Origins. And at that time, it was basically just me. I, when I say right. we, it was the royal, the royal we back then. <laughs> uh, you know, I did programming. I wrote the program, and then I licensed it to these guys, and they did everything else. And all I had to worry about was having a new version, you know, once a year at that time. Now, that lasted and, quite a long time, didn't it, Family Origins? Yeah, we, yeah, we went 10 years. We went 10, 10 versions. We went up through version 10. You know, and it was it was kind of rocky the last four or so years of that because the company we licensed it to uh, ended up being bought by our competitor. Ah. <laughs> uh, and, and so I basically bought a new computer and set the old computer with all my source code off to the side and started writing a new program. A whole that, new thing. And that was the birth yeah. of Roots Magic. Right. And that's what became Roots Magic. That was the Roots Magic. And spent about three years writing this new program from scratch. And then, you know, and then we released that, and then the family origins kind of disappeared, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We still actually have a lot of users that still use family origins, you know. They, wow, after all they, this they time. Find, they, they find <laughs> a, yeah, they find a program they like, and they don't change. Sure. Now, let's talk a little about what you do, because I think you have a very important space in the family history world right now. Some time back, we had Janet Havorka come on the show, of course, uh, she with Family Chart Masters, and, and we were talking about this concept of where do you want to plant your tree? In other words, you know, do you want to be maintaining trees on this website and that website and on this program? And I mean, it can get really inefficient, and you've really made quite the effort to make it much more efficient with Roots Magic. Talk about that transition, because in essence, Roots Magic was a higher-end version of personal ancestral file at one point. I think that would be a fair comparison, wouldn't you? 
Yeah. And then it's grown from there to the point where you actually are, are now sharing materials with MyHeritage and Ancestry and other sources. Talk about that growth a little bit and, and how it really works for people who want to plant their tree with Roots Magic. Yeah, well, we, we started working with Family Search years and years ago. And then when they came out with their new Family Search and then now Family Search Family Tree, they created what's called an API, which is just stands for application program interface. It's just nerd talk for the part of their the website that lets a desktop program talk to them. Mm-hmm. And so they released this API. Well, other companies that do data as well have also started coming out with APIs. So we started working with besides Family Search, we also work with My Heritage. We work with Find My Past. We've got two or three others that we're in contact with, working with them. Some of them are farther along with their APIs. Some have APIs that are done, and it's just up to us to wire it in. But what we've decided is we want to work with all these companies, and we have the advantage that we are not a data company. So we're not like Family Search or Ancestry where we've got data that we're trying to get people to subscribe to. Right. And this so, is just where people park their material. Right. And so that means that we're not really competitors with these different data sites. So they're willing to work with us. The big news is back in December, we announced that we are going to be working with Ancestry as well. So we'll be the only product that's out there working with both Ancestry and Family Search and My Heritage and Find My Past, basically all the big Right. Data sites will be the only ones that are able to work with all of them. Now, when you talk about working with them, what does that mean specifically to somebody who might be new to this whole concept, Bruce? There's really two parts to working with. And the level that we work with different partners is a little bit different depending on that partner. The first part thing working with would be what we call web hints. And what a web hint is, is Roots Magic goes out with your data and asks, these various sites, hey, do you have any information on this person? And if they do, they come back and we display a little light bulb. And when you click on that light bulb, it'll come up and say, oh, Family Search has this many hints for this person, and My Heritage has this many, and Find My Past has this many, that type of thing. And you can click and actually go see the hints or the records that those sites have available for your person. Right. Now, I would assume in order to access those specifically, though, you'd need a subscription to each one of them, yes? Right. You would need a subscription to actually see the full content. Mm -hmm. We can show you, without having a subscription, we can show you the basics. Now, Family Search is different. You do have to have an account on Family Search, but it's free. Right. So you you don't have to pay for a subscription there. But the others, if you want to see, for example, the actual image of the document from those sites, you would need to have a subscription with those sites. But we can show you the basic information. Now, if you wanted to see all the full indexed information and, like I say, a copy of the, uh, the image of the, of the document, then you would need to have a subscription with them. Right. And, of and course, are- some of these, they have different levels of subscription, so it might not be particularly costly. Right, right. Yeah, you know, they, they all work totally different in the way they do their sure. subscriptions. They now apparently they don't talk to each other and say this is the way to. <laughs> they, they all do their own thing, whatever works for them. Exactly, but um, I love the concept because essentially you're the only database that works like a funnel from all the big places. Right. So you can go independently to Family Search. You can go to Find My Past. You can go to uh, My Heritage. You can go to Ancestry. You can go to each one of these and type the information in for your person one at a time and see what results you get. Or in Roots Magic, it can do that for you in the background. Now, wow. the one thing that's nice is people say, well, why are you trying to make us buy a My Heritage or a Find My Past or an Ancestry subscription? The answer is we're not. We're not putting these in to make you get subscriptions. We're putting these in so that if you have a subscription, you can actually have that data right inside of Roots Magic. So you can actually go into our options and turn that on and off for each individual one. Oh. So if you were to say, oh, I don't use this particular one, you can go in and just uncheck that one, and those hints won't, you know, won't be going out looking for hints from that particular site. So you can customize, pick and choose which sites you want 
to get hints from. So what they're really saying is is that by posting these hints, you're you're actually taunting people that, that they can't get yeah, this. That's yeah, what they're really saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're basically saying, hey, look what we've got. You know, <laughs> and and, and it, it's it's good for our users because we can show them that there is possible stuff out there sure, for you. Sure, of course. It's good, it, it, it's good for these companies we're working with, which is why they actually allow us to do this. It's good for them because it's kind of a, the way that they can dangle a carrot and say, hey, we got these records. Right. Now, if you get a subscription, you can actually get download an image, copy of this image of this birth certificate or whatever. Well, and if you run into something that's absolutely critical to breaking through a brick wall or something in your line and you see it there, I mean, you will go out. You'll at least get the 14-day free trial, right, <laughs> to get a hold right. of that yeah. material. Yeah. And so that those web hints, like I was saying, that's the first part. That's kind of phase one when I'm talking about working with them. There's a second one, which is actually more detailed and that is the syncing side of things. And that's more complicated. And right now, our syncing is with Family Search. But by the end of the year, we will also have our syncing with Ancestry in. And what syncing is, is rather than going out and just saying, here's information about your person, it lets you transfer people, events, records, things like that, back and forth between your file and Roots Magic. And those websites. Oh, that's you'll huge. Be able, you'll be able to go out there and say, oh, look, out on Family Search, they have this line or this person that I don't have. Bring him over into Roots Magic, and it'll just pull him right into Roots Magic with all of his information. Or vice versa, you can say, I don't have that person up on Family Search, but I do have it in Roots Magic. Why don't I add my person to Family Search? Now, of course, this is totally up to you. This is, you know, this is not something where we're automatically just throwing everything of yours up on websites. But this is where you specifically say, yes, I want this person or these people to be posted from my file up onto FamilySearch or, like I say, coming soon, Ancestry. You'll have, if you have an Ancestry tree, you'll be able to sync that Ancestry tree with your Roots Magic file. He's Bruce Busby. He's the CEO and founder of Roots Magic, one of our sponsors, and we appreciate that, Bruce. And Bruce, keep going. And we're looking forward to hearing some of the advances you're making and, and, and can't imagine where you're going to be in a year or two from now. Well, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're just going to continue to, to work with new partners and, and continue to make the ones we're working with even, even easier to work with. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And this segment of our show has been brought to you by FamilySearch.org. And coming up for you next in five minutes, we're going to talk to Lindsay Fulton with the New England Historic Genealogical Society about J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, and genealogy. How's it all tie in? You'll find out. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the grandma gap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file 
style and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And on the line with me right now from Boston, Massachusetts, the Director of Research Services from the New England Historic Genealogical Society. She's my friend, Lindsay Fulton. And uh, Lindsay, welcome to the show. It's good to have you on again. It's been a while. Yes, it has been a while. Thank you very much. Delighted to be here. You know, I was just looking at (laughs) what you've been blogging about recently, about J.K. Rowling or Rowling, depending on how you want to say it. And the fact that she's something of a genealogist as she has put together her story. So let's uh, get a little bit nerdy here and talk about Harry Potter and her new movie that's coming out in November, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, about witches and wizards coming to the United States. Yeah. So J.K. Rowling and the wizarding world have always been very interesting to me. Uh, I kind of I grew up while all of the books were being released. So I've always been a huge fan, and now that I am in the world of genealogy, I've noticed that she spends a great deal of time on the backstory of all of her characters, really fleshing out the genealogies of all of these families. Okay. And when you think about the character themselves, you can discover a lot about that particular character if you look back at their genealogy, you know, why they have certain tendencies, what religion or family tradition they subscribe to, all of that can really be told if you start looking at the genealogy. That's really kind of a key to the entire series of Harry Potter, right? I mean, a lot of flashbacks, a lot of previous generation material that emerges over time, so we begin to understand the characters. Yeah, and it's not just Harry, and it's not just Draco, it's also with Voldemort himself. His genealogy plays a huge role in his decision-making and in his (laughs) beliefs. (laughs) <laughs> yes, and probably in his small nose, too. I mean, that, that had to be inherited, don't you think? <laughs> well, that's the snake feature. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so she spent a lot of time on this in the Harry Potter books. So in the books, that you know, what everyone knows as the Harry Potter books. Now that she's come out with a new movie coming out, The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, it's really a story about American wizards and witches. And to help us all out with this new idea... She's been writing some backstory on the history of witches and wizards in North America. And her newest story was about the American Hogwarts. I know I'm becoming incredibly nerdy here. So so, uh, so American Hogwarts is called Ilvermorny. Okay. And it's in Massachusetts. It's up on Mount Greylock. And the characters that she's attributing to the creation of this school, one of them... Her real name was Isolt Sayer, but she rearranged those letters and is claiming that it was actually Elias Story, who oh. we know from the historic record came over on the Mayflower. Right. Now, nobody ever accused Elias Story, though, of being a, a warlock or a wizard, right? No, no, no. In fact, he died the first winter, according to the historic record. So it's a nice little way for her to attribute almost his disappearance, which we know that he died. Sure. Uh, But she escaped into the woods in Massachusetts, and then she created this school for witches and wizards in North America. Right off the Mayflower. Fantastic. Right off the Mayflower, exactly. (laughs) Leave it to JK. Yes. The interesting part is she didn't stop there. So she actually has, as Zolt Sayer, she marries someone that Robert Charles Anderson identifies in the Great Migration series. His name is James Stewart. Okay. And he came over on the Fortune in 1621. The only thing that we know about him in terms of historic record is that he was recorded in a land deed, and that was the end of it. And then he disappears. So again, again, she's picking someone who we know from historic record was here in North America, or here in Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. and just kind of disappears at some point. So according to her, 
Isolt Sayer and James Stewart marry, and then they found the school. And, of course, everybody goes crazy for the backstory for yep. anything that J.K. Rowling does, right? Exactly. There's an application certainly in there for any of us who are putting together our family histories. And that's always, you know, how this all comes full circle. So I always used to say this when I was on the desk here at the Society. We want to think about the best way to accurately tell your family story. So how do we do that? We learn about when and where everyone was born, who they were named after, if there are veterans, what's the nationality, ethnicity, religion, family tradition. We have to think about all of these things in order to tell that complete story of your family. So whether it's fiction or nonfiction, that's the most important detail when coming up with either characters or telling a story about your own genealogy. So as J.K. has done this, is this something that's just kind of emerging now with her about, you know, her techniques for putting together her various characters and storylines? Or is this something that uh, goes way back to the beginning that we're just starting to understand? This is something that she's been doing from the get-go. There was a story that was told, actually, when they were filming The Order of the Phoenix. When they were filming that movie, they came up with an idea. You know, they wanted to create this tapestry family tree of the black family. And the director called J.K. Rowling and said, you know, can you give me a little bit more information about the black family? And she just started rattling off all of these siblings, you know, half cousins, cousins, you know, all of the people that would be in the family tree. And none of these people were in any of the books. I mean, this is something that she's, she just has in her head. Again, because that's what creates the richness of a story. If you, if you know about this entire world, and we're just talking about that small facet of the world, then the story becomes more genuine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I think that she's been doing that since, since the beginning of time. So it's, for me, incredibly inspiring that she would have taken the time to look for actual people in the historic record that were showing up that you know that we as genealogists know about and then she's just kind of giving this fun spin to what happened to them when they when they fell out of the historic record well you got to wonder how elias story would feel about that you know coming over as (laughs) as a pilgrim and now being turned into this character an opposite sex character who is a wizard or a witch Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you have any ideas in your mind about how somebody could actually go about writing a historical novel about their family using this technique? Well, I think, yeah. The most important detail would be, you know, gathering every little bit of information that you can about a family member to more specifically identify, you know, why someone would have been involved in a particular activity. It would really be up to you what piques your interest. So if you want to write a historic novel about the women's movement, you know, then you'd want to know more about the women and actually the men that were members of that family and how they may have contributed to that cause. Sure. The ideal thing to find would be like a journal or a diary or something that you could get to know that person and their voice more than just in the record, but sometimes just records can can give you an idea about a particular, you know, a person's characteristics and their personality and, you know, whether or not they're funny or, you know, you can you can find that out just just by the historic record itself. Well, that's true. And I think it's important that people do timelines not only for individuals, but then put that on a parallel list with what's going on immediately around them within the family, then within their local community, then within the region, and then, say, within the country, and then the world at large. And when you do that, then you get all kinds of perspectives that you can write around, don't you think? Exactly. That's a wonderful idea. I would highly recommend that. Well, it's been great chatting with you, Lindsay, and I've enjoyed our nine or ten minutes of nerd fest here talking (laughs) Harry Potter. (laughs) Well, Comic-Con just got done, so... That's true! (laughs) <laughs> did you get your costume off yet? I Yes, I did. I did. I'm not much for dressing up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a quiet nerd. <laughs> She's the director of research services at NEHGS, Lindsay Fulton. Thanks for joining us. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. And this segment has been brought to you by MyHeritage.com. And coming up for you next, we'll talk to Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority, about shipping. How does that apply to preservation? You're going to find out. It's more important than you think in three minutes on Extreme Genes.
Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com. When someone asks, what is forever.com, I tell them it's a new kind of digital storage, like for your photos and documents and all the family memories. And they always shoot back with, well, that's not a very new thing. There's Facebook, Shutterfly, Flickr. Then I say, oh, but on forever, you own all your content. There's no third party ads and it's guaranteed for your lifetime, plus 100 years. Do the others do that? Okay, so like I said, forever.com, a new kind of digital storage. You are the chief memory officer of your family. You get that frantic phone call about the reunion in two days and they need the slideshow. And you're ready because you use forever.com. Photos, news clippings, heck, you automatically upload the photos on your cell phone every day. You have everything digitally stored and organized where you can share it privately with your friends and family. No ads and it's permanent, guaranteed for generations. Yes, you are the chief memory officer and you have forever.com. Did you know that FamilySearch Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Hey, welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, Preservation Time with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. How are you, Tom? Super. All right. And this segment is brought to you by Forever.com. And Tom, with the extreme heat that's going on in most of the country right now, maybe it's time we talk about shipping stuff in these extreme temperatures. Oh, yeah, that's something that's really, really important because a lot of people listen to the show and they store the things, how we tell them to, not in the attic, not above heaters, and then they go and put them in a box and ship them in this extreme heat. And so all this good that they've been doing for years and years and years, it just whoop, went out the window. You know, I've thought about that, actually, as I was bringing you some of our things to digitize not long ago, having it in the trunk of a hot car. Oh, and it, exactly. What do you do? You know, you, you got to get it there. Yep. The thing that you need to do, and I tell people this, is if you're bringing stuff into one of our locations, make sure you come straight here and drop it off and then go do your errands. And then when you pick it up, go straight back home. Don't leave it in your car because it's just like your dog, your child. You know how that's so dangerous. It's the same thing on your vinyl records, your audio cassettes, oh. all this kind of stuff. You can really, really ruin them. And so what you want to do is ship them properly. And one thing you want to remember is never, ever, 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 ever ship on a Friday. Really? Because it's going to sit for two days in a cold truck or a hot truck or whatever. It's not going to go anywhere unless you're overnighting it. And that's the only way you can do it. Thursday, same thing. Don't ship it on a Thursday unless you're overnighting it. The best days to ship are Monday and Tuesday. Wherever you're shipping it to, it will usually get to that spot by the end of the week. Unless you're going like maybe from Florida to Washington State, then you're kind of in a tighter area. 
And what I would do is I would splurge a little bit and either send a priority mail on that Monday or send a UPS three-day or a Federal Express three-day, something like that. So you're not going to have that weekend where it's sitting. The, the cold isn't as bad, but the heat can absolutely ruin stuff. So you need to remember, you know, the flashpoint on different kind of media is different also. Really? The worst thing to ship when it's really, really hot is film because film has a lot lower flashpoint than like videotape. I've had videotapes brought into us that some two-year-old put in the oven, mom not knowing it was in there, turned on the oven to preheat it, and presto, melted it. However, we were able to cut off the case and still recover the tape by putting it in a new case. Film wouldn't have gone through something like that. No. Film would have been in the oven. It would have been melted. If you have film that starts to smell like vinegar, then you have film that needs to be transferred ASAP because it is disintegrating. It's going bye-bye. It's on the way out at that it point. Is. Exactly. What, what causes that smell? It's just the way that the film breaks down. The components of it, the different chemicals that are in film, tend to have that vinegary smell when it starts breaking down. So if it smells like that, don't think all is lost. I tell people, we'll get the very end of it and kind of fold it over, and if it snaps... You really need to get that lubricated, cleaned, everything. So, you know, send it to one of our locations, bring it in or whatever, and let us get it done ASAP. Back to the shipping part itself, the way you want to do things is we always tell you, always double package everything. So if you have an audio cassette or a CD or a DVD that you need to send in to have duplicate or whatever, or if you're sending it to another family member, I always recommend instead of the bubble envelopes, the envelopes that are made out of recycled paper padding inside, if it pops open, it just almost looks like insulation in there. That's the same stuff they use in insulating attics. Right. So it's going to be insulated. So if you're sending a DVD or an audio cassette to a family member, put it in one of those envelopes, address it, do everything like you would normally do, then put it inside of a box. And inside of the box, same thing. It's better to have styrofoam because styrofoam is going to absorb more heat as it's being shipped so it won't get to your product. And you can go extreme if you're really paranoid about these kind of things like I am. I go to Home Depot, I buy a sheet of styrofoam, I cut it for the size of the box, and then you're really, really protected. Because once again, what do they use? They use styrofoam in houses for insulation. After the break, we'll go into a little bit more details of other ways you can package your boxes too. All right, we'll get to that in three minutes on Extreme Jeans, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that 
meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com, provide your saliva sample from home, and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Hey, we are back. Final segment of Extreme Genes, America's family history show at ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, and we're talking preservation, of course, as always, with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, our preservation authority. And with all this extreme heat, we're talking about some of the things you need to be concerned about if you're shipping videos or home movies or photographs to various people to either digitize or to family members. And, Tom, we were getting into boxes within the boxes when we left the last segment. Exactly. And, like, as you said off the air, you know, people might think this is extreme, but what measures would you go through to save your stuff? You need to be very, very careful. And it's not just a heat situation. You know, you can go to these surplus places and buy all kinds of weird stuff that fell off the UPS truck, so to speak. So if you've got a box with a label and it gets torn off, the box gets opened, and they see an envelope or another box inside with all the same information— they know who it goes to. It's not lost. So it's just good protection to fight the heat or the extreme cold. And it's also a good protection in case somehow it gets damaged. Right. Good point. And to have that extra address on there. Absolutely. Because, you know, you want to take care of your stuff. You have made the decision, hey, I need to get my stuff digitized before it goes south. Make sure you pack your stuff properly. Or you've already had it done. Now you're sending out copies to other people in the family. You want to make sure it gets to them safe so that they'll be able to enjoy it as much as you enjoy it. Well, and the most important thing, as we've talked about over the years, is that we got to make sure that we have duplicate copies in different places, different climates. Imagine if you had uh, your only copy in New Orleans a few years ago and, exactly. and the hurricane came through or in another place where there was an earthquake and a building collapsed and, and that was it. But if you have them spread all over the place, you can withstand the loss of something in a disaster in one place because it exists again elsewhere. And of course, it can exist in many places online. Exactly. That is so true. Regional is really important. We told a story a few years ago. This family had wedding photos in New Orleans when Katrina came through. But they thought they'd be okay because they had a copy. They gave their parents a copy, and they still had the photographer had a copy. Unfortunately, Katrina was so devastating, all three of them got totally flooded out, so they lost everything. Wow. So I tell you, if you're in earthquake country, send stuff to the Midwest where they have tornadoes. If you have, <laughs> you know, other places, send them to the deep south that has hurricanes. And so we're not. if we have earthquakes, hurricanes, and tornadoes at the same time, you know it's the last days, and who cares? <laughs> I suspect that's true. We're not going to need the pictures. We'll, exactly. We'll see all these deceased folks soon enough ourselves. Exactly. So that's <laughs> why you want to spread it out. And like you say, you know, there's plenty of places to do it online. Like I recommend, you want to have things on disks. You want to have them on a hard drive. You want to have them in hopefully two clouds that are unrelated. And then if something happens, you've always got the backup. Send them to friends. Even if you don't have family, you've got to have some friends in another part of the country. Even if they're Facebook friends and say, hey, you know, I've got these CDs. I'm really worried about them. Can I send you a copy just to keep in your closets in case something happens? And most people are more than happy to do that. So tell me briefly before we run out of time, what about extreme cold? Because that's going to be coming here soon enough. Exactly. And the biggest thing, again, film is always going to be the problem because film, when it gets really, really cold, it can crack. So when you package it, that's why you want to have tons of padding around your film to keep it as insulated as possible. Don't ever assume anything. These are memories you've had forever. Take care of them when you're sending them off to us or friends and family. All right. This may sound like it's extreme, but this is something you might want to think about as you go about preserving your memories. Thanks so much, Tom. Good to be here. And this segment of Extreme Genes has been brought to you by RootsMagic.com and 23andMe.com DNA. Well, that wraps up our show for this week. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to sign up this week on our Extreme Genes Facebook page or on ExtremeGenes.com for our brand new newsletter, The Weekly Genie. It's free. And when you sign up, you get a list of David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginners. So if you're just getting started, it's something you will not want to miss. 
Thanks once again to our guests. And if you missed any part of the show today, of course, you can catch the podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio's talk channel, and at ExtremeGenes.com. Take care. We'll talk to you again next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. Family.